Picture started flickering, but anyway, hi, right. Maker's Corner here again. Uh, it's been a while, and I've been struggling with this um, thermal heat transfer tests system, and I'm trying to get the um, heater control mechanism to work, and um, been running into a bit of problems. And I'm now working this all. Let's see. Yeah, so here I'm using this MOSFET driver module. And um, like I said in the last last episode I made this um can do like one amp without a um, heat sink. But I've added a heat sink and I've added a fan. So it's actually quite capable of carrying current. Um, but this is supposed to be logic level driven, or should be able to be logic level driven on the gate uh, when you're looking at the signal input for to control it, you should be able to send in a 5 volt signal either continuous or stepped, and it should work but I've been running in, my problem I've been running into that then um, it doesn't really open up the um, MOSFET to its full ability. So then the internal resistance of the MOSFET is basically the same as the resistance of the heater module. And then you mean you get like half the voltage on the MOSFET and half the voltage on the heater. So I started like figuring around stuff and I looked up some charts. And it turned out that um, I can actually look at the, the that's probably not interesting oh, where did I put it oh wait it's uh, here so here's the actual circuit that I'm using so here the input signal it should um, actually be a logic level but then as I said the internal resistance here um, gets rather high still I even measured it on with the oscilloscope. It's, it goes quite close to 5 volts. Um, so anyway, I couldn't get enough current to go through it. Because I want to basically run the system on 12 volts. And I, and I don't want the, so much resistance in the MOSFET that it just generates a lot of losses in the MOSFET and then it just gets too hot. So I tried applying 6... I took an, uh, my power supply and applied 6 volts to the gate with the same circuitry. And, and the resistance of the MOSFET dropped immediately down to the ratings that are basically given here in in this chart here. So even, even this this is a test dot. This is the um, resistance from de drain to source, and they've done the test based on 10 volts and 5 amp load. You know, basically you get these resistances as well. And here you see the gate thresholds. So I mean the the minimum the what should be good enough to trigger it. So it's it's over four volts, but it still it doesn't produce these kind of resistances. So I go when I put the voltage to you know, with this particular uh, because of course all these semiconductors are a little bit different, but with the you know, with the one I have uh, in the module now. Um, it um, doesn't produce. It only produces these resistances if you increase the gate voltage. I don't know if I told the group uh, did last time, but the original MOSFET it died, and I don't know. I can't see that it died. For, I don't know why it died. It just stopped working, and it wasn't getting too hot because I already had the heat sink on it. But anyway, whatever. You know, electronics is electronics, and I had like a whole pile of them left. So, I've, that's a very common MOSFET, so I had actually a few of them in stock. So I just swapped it out. But anyway, since I concluded that applying a higher gate voltage to this MOSFET relieves the problems I am having, I will build an amplifier circuit. Um, so I'm just going to take this very simple 
um, a transistor and just build a circuit out of this to uh, control the uh, voltage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically use 12 volts to control the, th uh, the uh, MOSFET gate. So you know, because the, uh, there's no current involved, so this this won't have this transistor won't have to switch any current at all. So I just wire it with a uh, a resistor to the from 12 volts to the collector emitter to ground, and then uh, resistor on the on the base control, and the base will be driven then by the by 5 volts. And um, actually, I think I can show that if we switch to. Oh, it's hard to control with a mouse. So I don't know what I'm controlling. Oh, wait. Here. So anyway, here, here's the Arduino, Arduino board, and here's the. Um, the uh, MOSFET control module. And, um, actually, I think I said it was a thyristor based control module, but it actually turned out to be a MOSFET based. I hadn't actually checked it that in detail. And, um, let's see, you know, if I. So I have my. Con I have the transistor here set up as I described. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply the voltage. Let's see. The current off. And then I can increase to the nominal 12 volts. So that's feeding 12 volts. And the control signal coming in is logic low, zero to five volts coming from the from the Arduino being fed into the transistor. And then this is the signal that leaves that will then go to the MOSFET and control the gate. And that's a nice signal to have. That's that's um, twelve volts. So each peak is twelve volts. So if if that the, because the MOSFET you, you control it with field effects, so basically it's the voltage that counts, and there's no current. So anyway, then we will, um, yeah, so that'll be, it should be perfect. So I have to put this contraption you know, on some kind of a proto board to make it more, more permanent. I also went ahead and ordered a, um, a, a real thyristor control. Unit. Um, no, it'll be, it'll be arriving from China, so it might take a while. We'll see. Bought some other cool stuff from China, also to test some. Maybe make a few videos in the, on that, a few next videos about that. Uh, but anyway, it would be nice to get this running if I can get the, um, you know, the gate control voltage so that I can drive the MOSFET to not have it such a big internal resistance then we can get back in action so it actually won't heat up so much either. so the, the, the actual MOSFET will run much cooler and then the energy will end up in the <laughs> heater block as intended yeah um, but again it would have been difficult to diagnose this without the oscilloscope because you can't really, you know, sin sinus wave can't really measure with a multimeter, it gets a bit tricky. So uh, I, I was actually using the oscilloscope to see the voltage drop <laughs> uh, waveform over the, uh, the um, MOSFET. And uh, you could actually do it with DC, DC voltage also, so I had it without the, uh, without the um, uh, pulse width modulation control. So I said, ah, but then I could have measured it with a multimeter. Ah, more fun to do with the oscilloscope. Anyway. But anyway, I could see it on the oscilloscope that it was eating half the voltage. So that, that was not good. 
So I was feeding in 12 volts, which I would like to be the operational voltage for the system. <laughs> I was burning 6 volts of that on the MOSFET. And the, uh, and the rest ended up on the uh, heater block. But I think with this, with this just adding the simple transistor thing here, I'll, I will be able to kick up the, the um, control voltage for the gate to, to over 10 volts. And I, I think that, that should open up the gate or open up the MOSFET and close it. And as you see, it also goes to zero very nicely. So it'll, it'll shut it out or close it also. Well. So that took a bit of fiddling to figure out. But that's part of the fun, I suppose. One learns more stuff the more one moves ahead. I haven't been working with electronic data sheets that much lately. But I used to do it when I was more when I was younger, but now it's, it's cool to get back into this. Uh, it's actually mind boggling how little things have changed. I mean, the. the you know, the, the, like, you can still get the NE555 timer um, circuit. I, I've got them in the box, five of them. I mean, and then there's these standard NPMP MP transistors, MOSFETs. They haven't changed. I mean, they're the exact same brands. I mean, uh, the same models. So, I mean, the only difference is that, that we have the internet now. So now it's just so fantastically easy to find data sheets and circuit diagrams and stuff. It just takes five seconds to find them on the net. Yeah, so that was my thought of giving up. I really need to do something about this camera, so I don't really have the space. I think I might be able to set up an extra tripod so I can get that action cam into a better place. Yeah, you see, a small fan on that works really good. Stole it from a heater, he uh, hot end um, cooling fan from my 3D printer project. I bought like seven hot ends from China, They're like five dollars each. <laughs> I'm reusing the components and all. But anyway, once I've made this this control circuit more permanent, then um, then I can move to automating the um, the heating cycle and measurement cycles. Because I want to automate all this. I want it to run through standard scenarios, and I want to add some uh, disturbance factors into this experiment. So there will be a, I'll be adding some um, fans to the box, so there will be a bit more. Um, lively action when it comes to that and then I, then I can um, then we can start oh yeah I don't know make a few videos on data gathering and storage um, make a few videos on the control logic uh, the, uh, the things to do as long as time permits always a lack of time not so much money like this I could recommend this as a hobby, it's not that horrendously expensive. You don't need an oscilloscope, you can survive without it. It's just nice to have. Yeah, anything? Let's see if there's anything else to talk about so much. Yeah, if anybody wants to see any more details about anything, just leave it in the comments. I can give an extra session on that. But I think I solved the MOSFET problem. Uh, it, 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 this problem basically shouldn't exist, but then of course they're talking about using this MOSFET with mostly when you look at it and how the module is delivered. Then they kind of recommend you use it for like one amp loads. And if you're running one amp logic controlled, ah, yeah, you can it'll get hot but you can use it and I don't know in batch wise how t how accurate the tolerances are because you know I've, I mean in theory an IRF 520 should be specified the same way from multiple manufacturers but I don't know I, I actually have no idea where my 
where my um, MOSFETs have come from, uh, where the original MOSFET on the, on the module came from, or where the MOSFETs that I have just hanging around, which are the same type, come from. So it could be just that it's manufacturing tolerances. And I do know that historically speaking, if you had a logic level MOSFET or uh, uh, oh, I forgot the name now. If you if you use um, tourist control on a logic level, they, they there has historically been issues with that. I mean, they like to say that you can use logic level control because then they can sell more of them in certain ways. Uh, but it's not optimum. Uh, having five volts only to control the circuit is mm, yeah. But anyway, whatever, right? this, this this transistor set up. I, I add a transistor and two resistors and then I'm you know, on a circuit board. I'm basically done. So, um, ah, it'll be okay. Um, oh, might pop a video once I get it um, integrated so I can show the actual uh, uh, voltage drop over the um, MOSFET and you'll see that it's, um, it is actually much lower when you have a decent control, gate control voltage. Okay, I think I'll sign out for the evening and um, check the audio on this one also. And if the audio is okay then I'll upload it. Okay. See everybody later.